for the glory of humongous. I'm John Renton with the Retro View of Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. Well, ow. I don't know how Hawk did that for so many goddamn years. May Hawk and Animal rest in peace. So yeah, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, which was a sequel to, wait for it, Mad Max. Yeah, I know, shocking. This came out two years after Mad Max, and Lee Morn to the goofy, pulpy side, where basically this was just full of car chases and stupid characters, stupid heroes, stupid villains, and, you know, Humongous had a pretty, I guess, cult iconic look, but he didn't really do much of anything in this, and... Okay, if you missed the review that I did for Mad Max from 1979, you will know that while I was never the biggest fan of the Mad Max movies, I appreciated the pulpy, goofy nature of them. And while I recognize that this film has some fun moments, it also doesn't really have much of anything beyond car chases. And really, this movie isn't carried that far, despite the fact that it really does try to <clears throat> just blow shit up, blow more shit up, and have people act like idiots. Don't get me wrong, George Miller knows and understands the assignment and definitely appealed to people that like the pulpy, goofy stuff, but yeah, it's only going to carry you so goddamn far, George. But then again, he did Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and then he did Mad Max Fury Road. I will be reviewing those in the coming days, and then I will be reviewing Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, because... Anya or Anya Taylor-Joy, yeah, you can get me into the theater and pretty much watch anything she's in. So it was written by Terry Hayes, who did From Hell and Dead Calm. From Hell, I remember that. I remember it being shit. I don't think it was his fault, but it was shit. Brian Hannant, <coughs> who did The Time Guardian and other stuff. Mel Gibson returns as Max, and now he must just hoard fuel, protect his dog, and then he gets locked in a battle between the Humongous Fellows, led by Humongous, which did lead to Lord Humongous across various wrestling territories. Sid Vicious played that at one point. Yes, Psycho Sid himself, the man who had half the brain that we do. And we get the gyro captain, Bruce Spence. You will recognize Bruce Spence. You don't even have to check out his IMDb page, just look at the guy. We do also get a Papa Gallo. There are stupid names in this movie, by the way. Michael Preston. <coughs> and then we get Toadie. Now, Toadie in the West Rocket. Pretty certain I screwed up that name. Max Phipps. Uh, Vernon Wells seems to have fun as Wes. Like, he's the one with the goofy red hair. And then you have the feral kid, Emil Monty. <coughs> and Humongous is uh, Jill, Kel Nilsson. K-J-E-L-L. -L, and then Nilsson. And all he does is talk and shoot a couple people, and that's about it. So this did have a $3 million budget compared to the 300 k that the 1979 edition had. So they were like, we're happy with the box office returns. Here's more money, George. Blow, uh, blow more shit up. Or blow more shit up. That's $10.3 in today's money. <coughs> $2.5 million opening. Pretty good. And $8.5 million in today's money. And then we get to, um, well, that's like, yeah, around $8, $9 million or something like that. And $23.6 million gross, which would be just around $81 million today. So I think I might have fudged some of those numbers. Bottom line is, is this thing did actually uh, become a rip-roaring success, all things considered. So yeah, Max basically gets locked into this plot to help people. But he's kind of a bit of a loner. We get a brief recap of all the stuff that happened before, what led to fuel being a commodity... And something that people would kill for. And also the fact that his stupid wife, by the way, who abandoned their child. Abandoned my child! Abandoned my boy! <sighs> you know, I'm sorry, but that wife fucking deserved to die. That wife is stupid. That kid is really fucking annoying. Anyway, Max lost everybody. He has a dog. The dog dies, by the way. Off camera, thankfully, so I didn't have to dock this film much of anything. Because I don't like animal violence. But, yeah. Beefier budget. More car wrecks, and more people acting like idiots. So, um, there's this one point where uh, Bruce Spence's character is hiding underground and surprises Mel Gibson when he tries to get a snake off of this flying machine, this old gyrocopter. Ha 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 ha. He says, never seen a man beat a snake before. You really should check the internet, except the internet didn't exist. It's actually beat the snake, but I digress. 
So, Spence is a goof. He plays the goof well, I will say that. And then they happen upon this convoy, this, you know, fort where everybody's handling this tanker business. And Lord Humongous, I know he's called Humongous, I'm just going to call him Lord Humongous in this, because it's just funnier. It's funnier than half the shit in this movie. And his people are like, for the glory of Humongous, it's like, you will let me go. I realize his accent went from Ukrainian to Spanish to South African, sometimes within the same scene. So I don't know what the fuck. He wore a Jason hockey mask, and... The Pharaoh Kid throws a boomerang, a boomerang, comes right back like a boomerang, a boomerang. Who remembers the boomerang educational show that was for kids? Who remembers that? Because that's a deep cut even for me. So, I did kind of uh, find it funny when they introduced Humongous, the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla. Humongous was a better worker than Chris Jericho, I just want to say. So, if you walk away, it'll be an end of the horror. Just give me the gas. They seem to waste a whole lot of gas driving around, by the way. That's the one thing about this that I always found kind of funny. We will never walk away. And some of the people are like, no, we really should. And Papa Gallo says, no, we have this guy. Because Max shows up with one of these guys, Nathan, and tried to save him. Had a contract with him. And if you help me, I'll get you all the fuel you want. And so, yeah, they just he decided to help him. <coughs> He saw an 18-wheeler on the way back, or on the way to the place, so he gets the 18-wheeler, gets it activated. Spence has his flying machine, helps him out occasionally, throws his snake, and throws bombs, and tries to do stuff to help Max get, you know, from point A to point B without landing in the apocalyptic sea. Humongous doesn't do much. At one point, he shoots the uh, truck a little bit. He's a terrible leader, by the way. Terrible. The villains in this movie are fucking terrible. And I guess, I know they're supposed to be goofy, but god damn, Vernon Wells, again, does seem to have a little bit of fun. Um, there's talk of like, okay, Max has fulfilled his obligation, he will leave, he does, and then he crashes his car and the dog gets uh, killed with an arrow. They shot an arrow into the puppy. That's about it. Yeah, I was kind of a little bit pissed off about that, but I forgot that the dog died, but nevertheless, it's a post-apocalyptic movie and you have to give Mel Gibson a reason to hate Hate the uh, hate the people there. He wouldn't call Humongous anything else that rhymes with Hugh. Why would you think that? <laughs> Mel Gibson has never shown himself to be an anti-Semitic asshole years after this. So, <clears throat> a lot of people are dying while they're on this convoy trying to lead the tanker away. And all these other vehicles are drawing the fire, so to speak. So some people die. There's a warrior woman that gets killed. Beautiful blonde, I do want to say. And these bad guys suck. Humongous... Uses some nitro on his goddamn car. They race a little bit. And yeah, some of the car chase scenes are kind of cool. And they certainly try to make it pulpy and ridiculous. But it just kind of ends up being a little mind-numbing. And I haven't watched Beyond Thunderdome in quite a while. So I'm interested to see how that one still holds up. So, Gyro crashes. But he's fine. He can drive that copter around. Humongous gets uh, rammed. And Vernon Wells dies. I know his name's Wes, but it's just saying Vernon Wells in a post-apocalyptic movie. Dying just sounds funnier. And Gyro's alive. Also, the tanker was full of sand because they use Max as a decoy. And then transport all the stuff to this paradise. And Mad Max was just doing, you know, whatever the fuck he was doing. And there was this opening narration and closing narration from the feral kid that became a leader. There, put those notes over there. Just get rid of that shit. It's not even a bad movie. It's just a basic one with a few decent moments. But a lot of stuff that just kind of went, yeah. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.